super authentic. Yeah. I'm so authentic. <laughs> so in today's video, we're gonna be trying out two new DIY techniques. Now, I've done some embroidering before, but nothing to this scale. I need a shade that's equally as fantastic, and that got me thinking of today's DIY. Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls. So sometimes we just stick to kind of like the DIY techniques that we know. And as good DIYers, we definitely want to expand what we know. So in today's video, we're going to be trying out two new DIY techniques that we haven't done too much of. And we're going to incorporate them into some like little decor pieces that you can use around your home. So let's just jump into it. Take it away. Subscribe if you haven't already. And um... Hold up, if you guys are a subscriber of the vlog channel, you probably know that we are safe at home social distancing. So this video was in fact recorded a couple of weeks ago, but we thought this content was super relevant for staying at home. These DIY techniques, I swear, were made for this. So enjoy the video and stay safe. So our first DIY is actually going to be a island themed DIY. We're actually going to be embroidering a beautiful and tranquil island scene on this embroidery hoop. We're gonna be learning some new techniques along the way as well. Um, as somebody who didn't get their island vacation this year that I love to try to squeeze in, I wasn't able to, so I'm gonna be taking full advantage of this. Now, I've done some embroidering before, but nothing to this scale. I realize that this is a very small embroidery hoop, but I mean like we're gonna do the whole thing. Usually I'm just doing like a little quote or something. So I'm excited to try out some new techniques. Let's get started. <laughs> okay, so I have my four inch hoop here with some light fabric. I actually cut this out of a bag that we were no longer using. Thank you, bag. Now we also have some embroidery thread here. Because we're doing an island ocean scene, we're gonna have some sand. We're gonna have some deep waves. We're gonna have some lighter waves and we're gonna have like this ombre color. Look at how pretty this is. And then we have little trees for our island. I don't know if this is gonna be enough embroidery thread, but we're all gonna find out together. First thing I'm gonna do is get a pencil and we're gonna draw our scene. So I think I wanna keep the outside a circle. So I'm gonna just draw a circle all the way around the edge. I probably should have traced something, but you know. And then we're gonna take our good old embroidery needle and I'm going to start with my sand color because I want the sand to like lie underneath the water, if that makes sense. And we're gonna fold our sand color in half, cut ourselves off a piece and tie it in a knot. Then we get comfortable. Cause we're here for the long haul. So next up we're gonna come pretty much on the outside of our circle here. And we're gonna be doing something called a satin stitch, which is covering up like large portions of this. So we're just gonna pick a distance. I'm going about like maybe three quarters of an inch and then coming back to the outside. Now you could go like back and forth like this, but we're going from here to here and then maybe I'll come here and then like come back so that you're building on it that way. But something else we're doing with this satin stitch today is that I'm not covering like a perfect leaf shape or a perfect square shape. I want this to be like one giant ombre because the waves and nature, it kind of just is a giant ombre. We luckily don't have to be too exact with this. Oh yeah, wait, hold up. You know what I should do first? Is figure out where I want my sand to end and where I want my different colors of beach to start. So I think I want my beach to kind of be like this almost like a crescent moon. And then I'll do another, I have three colors here. So I'll do one color, maybe a little bit smaller cause it's like the crashing waves. And then maybe my ombre and then my darker color. So you can see I have one, two, three, four different sections. And then those green trees will come later. So I probably should have done that one further. See, this is why I should have done this first. It's okay, we're all learning together. So I'm done, honestly, that didn't take too long at all. It's also because I have a thick embroidery floss that isn't like too tightly woven. And depending on what embroidery floss that you pick up, you're gonna have a different effect, whether it's like a shinier or like tighter or something. So just keep that in mind when you are picking up your floss. So as per my four different sections, I'm gonna move on to the next section, which is my light blue color. Now, the only thing I'm gonna do a little bit differently this time 
is I'm going to start on the pencil line that is not close to the sand color. And I'm actually gonna go like into the sand a little bit so that it kind of like creates this variance. So it's not like a straight line. I want it to kind of like blend because we're going for that ombre vibe. Since I didn't want to do a straight line here on the edge because it would like not go around the circle, I'm just doing three back-to-back -back stitches very close to each other. Give the effect of a straight line, but it actually curves. Okay, so I'm pretty much done my light color here. I learned something quite important and what I was doing before was going like in the front side and then like coming up the top of the back side and then coming, like I was going constantly like this, which means that the back, if you can see here, looked very similar to the front because I was using way too much thread and more than I needed to. So you can see I've switched the way I do it. Instead of going in and out, in and out, I'm going in, out, which is the front, and then at the back I'm going around, and then I'm coming up bottom, top, and around. You know, as you can see, this one I did like a little bit more uneven because I want it to look like the waves are um, overtaking the sand. Now I'm gonna move on to my really pretty like ombre color, which kind of has a couple of my different colors here. So I think that's gonna be really pretty and I'm gonna do that in my next block here. Okay, so I have my four colors done. I'm honestly stoked. I think it's like the cutest little thing, but we're gonna do a couple final touches. So I have my green embroidery thread here and I'm gonna make some trees on my sandy part of my island. And to do that, I'm gonna use a French knot, which I will teach you how to do. I just learned. So I'm going to come up from the bottom with my knot so it won't come through. And then I'm going to hold this to the side and then I'm gonna wrap it around my needle twice, like so, and then re-enter kind of like just beside where I came out originally. And then pull it through, and you have a little French knot. And these are gonna be my trees, so I'm gonna do a couple more of those in a little cluster here. Cause I wanna do like three little bushes equal one tree, you know? So I have my trees done here. They're really cute. They're a good little addition here. But for my final trick, I'm gonna add something out in the water. So I have just a small piece of red and white. I put them both through the same like needle hole because I'm gonna make a little buoy. So I'm gonna do that same French knot technique and just kind of like do it out here where the waves are and make myself a little French knot buoy in the water. That's so cute. Now that you know the techniques, you can kind of do this for like any kind of scene, but I really like the whole ombre technique. Now, once you have this, um, it's obviously really cute decor. Like I could just see this like in a bathroom or something. And it's also a good addition to a gallery wall because sometimes doing just frames on a gallery wall can be a little bit much. So adding in little elements that aren't just a simple frame can be really interesting. And of course we can always take it off of our embroidery hoop and add some like sticky backing and make it its own little patch. But I personally love it as just a little piece of art. Okay, so before we get into this little bit of a story time, I was at the thrift store the other day and like sometimes I just go there to browse, not because I need anything specific. And um, I saw this in the lighting section, which I don't know who would throw this out. It's the most beautiful table lamp I think I've ever seen, but it came without a shade. So I was brainstorming on what shade I could put on this. And because this lamp is so cool, I feel like it needed a shade that was equally, equally that's cool. So then I was on Pinterest looking up different DIY shade things and I saw this photo, which is basically like a woven wool type deal made into a shade. And I thought that was so beautiful, so gorgeous that I needed to make it for this. And then I realized I've actually never done loom weaving before, which is funny because on our channel, we have a tutorial on how to make this. This is the loom weave setup. It's like the base. It's what you need to get started to actually do the weaving onto. And if you wanna check out that video on how to make this, it's essentially an upcycled picture frame. It's quite easy. I'm gonna link it below. Once you've made the setup for it, come back because I'm actually gonna to try to weave onto this guy. So today, what I'm gonna do is make something on this that once I take it off, I can wrap around a shade to go on my thrifted lamp gonna be great. This is gonna be just a weird mix of me trying this for my first time ever while also kind of giving you a little bit of DIY tips on how to actually do it as well. So let's get started. 
Okay, so to start, I'm actually gonna just use the same thread that I used to warp the loom to do a couple layers of stitches just to get everything nice and tight before I go in and use some chunkier, big yarn. Both of these pieces act as spacers, and then we also DIY'd a wooden needle, which will be very helpful. So I'm gonna start by taking this thread and doing a couple layers on the loom. In my research, I learned that to start it, you just wanna weave in from the middle a little bit out just to get this in there. So you go over, under, over, under, pull it to the back where we will never see it and just leave it to chill out for a bit. And then I can put the other end of this thread on the needle and weave it over and under, over, under to make a couple rows. Oh no, I already made a knot by accident. <laughs> I think that this is gonna be much easier once I get to the thicker thread. It'll go by faster, it'll be easier to see what I'm doing. It's just starting with this little delicate stuff that's a bit hard. Ah, I pulled it out! I feel like this is gonna be like a lot of things, like knitting or whatever. Like, to get it started is always the hardest part. And then once you're in the flow, you're good to go. The trick is just to not pull it too tight. Okay, now once I've gone all the way to the one end, I just reverse and go back the other way. So once you've alternated going over and under all the way across, it's time to go back the other way. And all you need to remember here is that you are doing the opposite strings as the row before. So if you're going over, under, over, under, you're now going under, over, under, over. Once I've done a couple rows with the thin yarn, I'm switching to a thicker, woollier yarn and doing the same super basic under, over weave a couple more times. Um, you guys, I cannot believe how legit this is looking and it was so easy. This is essentially the same weave pattern I've done, just switching up the different yarns to give it different textures. I feel like if I can do it and I've never tried it before, you guys totally can. So since I think we've got this one down pat, we're gonna go a little crazy and throw in one new stitch pattern just to switch up the vibe of this. And the next one I'm gonna try is called the sumac stitch, which basically leaves you with a pattern that looks a little bit chevron-esque. And I'm gonna do that with a much chunkier so we're gonna be working in bunches of four warp threads at a time because this yarn is so thick. If you're using a thinner yarn, you don't need to do four, you can do two or even one at a time. So I'm gonna bring this under the first four threads. One, two, three, four. Just pull out a little bit. This will be the tail. Moving over, we're gonna count out another four. One, two, three, four. And bring it under, going right to left. Make sure these aren't getting too bunchy. Okay, then we count out the next four. One, two, three, four, and bring this underneath, going from right to left. So even though on a whole we're going left to right, every time we wrap it around, it's going right to left. And you can see it's kind of making these little ankle stitches. Okay, one more time, count out the next four. One, two, three, four, and then bring the whole bunch over and pull it through from right to left. Cool, and I'm gonna keep just doing that all the way to the end. So how's it going, Becky? Um, some thoughts. It's looking so cute and like very legitimate in my opinion. I will say it's taking longer than I thought it would, but that's with most things. And I'll also say like, I find this to be like a little more mentally challenging than I thought it would. Maybe that's a me thing, but it's not like, for example, knitting when you get in your groove and you just go. I find that like I actually have to think about it every single time. Like, am I making sure to go over and under each individual thread? But I'm doing it and it's not that bad at all. Like considering, yeah, I've never done it. I think it's, it's turning out really good and I'm enjoying it. So I think because I'm just sticking to the two basic stitches, I'm just gonna repeat those on different threads and in different amounts until the very end and I will check in with you when it's done. Okay, she is finished. So I'm just gonna pull it off the nails and then add it to the lampshade. And as you can tell, my weaving wasn't entirely long enough to go all the way around the lampshade. So what I'm doing is just taking some extra yarn on a needle and actually looping it through the ends of my weaving, the little thin white string, and doing it up basically like the way you would dupe a corset and going all the way up and pulling it tight. Have it on the lamp 
this is how it looks. And I wanna say, I feel like this isn't a lamp for everybody. I feel like it can lean a little bit granny, but I love it so much. I feel like it's just like the right combo of good textures and wood, and it's something that, like I said, I feel like I've said this a thousand times, I haven't tried this yet, but I really like how this turned out. It was easy, it was fun, and I got a cool new lamp to add to my house. Thank you guys so much for checking out today's video. We want to do more videos like this one where we try out new DIY techniques. We're thinking like felting, epoxy, but tell us in the comments below what you'd like us to try out and maybe we'll do a part two. Mm -hmm. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye now.